On this episode of the Nugget Project, we paint up our roll cage and we put our interior back together. Alrighty gang, so we've got a big day ahead. Uh, first off, we're going to take out the seat, the steering wheel, and move all the cables and everything we need to. And then we are going to get in and wire brush all the new welded parts, give it a vacuum, give it a clean, and then we're going to paint up all the white bits that need retouching, and then we can get started on our cage. Let's go. Okay, here's where we're up to. I've done a terrible but acceptable job of uh, respraying this all white and it looks a lot better. Um, sprayed the, the boxes that the well cage sits on in all corners. And I've just got to spray a little bit more on the rear strut towers. The paint ran because it's too freaking cold today, but you know what, I just want to get it done. So I'm going to do just another coat on those, but while I'm waiting for everything to dry, I am going to finish off our doors. So now I can, um, as you clean all this down, I'm going to um, just put a, a little bead of sealant around here just to stop the doors rattling, put our panels back on, a bit of Loctite and a thread so they don't come undone, and uh, yeah, that'll be it. They don't need to come off again. Hopefully. Hopefully. Huzzah! Door is back together. We've got a winder on. Our, uh, handle and uh, little pull handle and all the screws are loctited in so they're not going to rattle out and I've just put that bead of silicon in the sheet behind there just to stop the panel rattling so much and give it a bit of weatherproofing for the water coming through. They do it from factory and considering it weighs absolutely nothing why wouldn't I do it? Uh, the inside's slowly drying I've just got to do one more coat at the back here and then uh, yeah we'll, uh, we'll get onto the cage. So I'm going to go do the other door now, but uh, I won't bother filming that, you know the deal. Okay, I lied, I filmed it. But there we go, both door panels are back on. Very cool. Now I'm just waiting for paint to dry. It's about as interesting as watching paint dry, which is pretty much what I'm doing. So it's, it's pretty good, it's almost there, and as soon as it is there, I'm gonna start masking up this car. I think I'm gonna start masking up the roof because there's no wet paint up there. So I've got uh, plastic sheeting and paper sheeting. I'm gonna basically stick to the roof and get all in there. This masking job is gonna probably be the longest process of this whole thing. Um, just making sure I don't spray any other bits of the car. So uh, yeah, here we go, let's start masking. Okay, masking up the interior of a car to paint a roll cage is now my new least favorite thing. Um, that was pretty, it's so freaking time consuming. Look at the roof. So much paper and freaking tape. Anyway, I think we've pretty much got it all covered now. I've got drop sheets on the ground. Um, I'm gonna use a bit of cardboard behind some of the bits for when I'm spraying. I'm um, just trying to get some of this off of the cage. Uh, I've just got to mask up the bottom where they join the boxes. I've already done that side. Um, got these other ones and then I'm just gonna start spraying and see what happens. Come along on my journey. Okay, so a couple of things. Firstly, I guess the cat's out the bag with what colour I'm doing this cage. I'm going pretty wild. Now, this is a learn from my mistake style situation. So, I painted the cage, I went through about a can and a half and now I realised the paint is just way too light and it just wasn't covering enough. I would have had to have done like 30 cans to cover everything properly. So I thought, screw it. I've got a uh, can of uh, Edge Primer once it had dried and I've gone over the whole thing with uh, Edge Primer, which should give us a nice even base to paint on. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a little bit of a waste of a morning, but that's okay. We're still masked up and we're still good to go. So uh, I'm gonna come back in a couple of days when I've got some time off and uh, I'm just gonna etch prime a little bit more and then, uh, and then we can have another crack at this 
neon red, which is similar to the detail color of the Hyundai Elantra rally car. It looks pretty cool. So that's the color I'm going for on the cage because why the hell not race car. So yeah, we'll come back in a couple of days. We'll finish off a bit of this priming and then, uh, and then we'll have another crack at this color. Awesome. Okay, let's give this another go. Everything is primed. Let's try and make it red again. Let's try and talk outside of my Bane mask. How does that sound? Um, look, it's not gonna be the most amazing paint job in the world, but hopefully it'll look pretty cool. It'll be one of those stand back a bit and it'll look fantastic jobs, just like the rest of this car. Just look at it from, you know, two meters back and it'll be fantastic. I mentioned I hate painting. Okay, so I've done quite a few coats on this now. Unfortunately, it is not the uh, neon style color I was hoping for. You can kind of see that's the color it should be and where I've oversprayed on the white, it is neon. So I think really what I needed to do to make that neon was to do the undercoat, then probably spray it white and then spray on top of that but I've come too far now, I cannot be stuffed, so this is now the color of this cage will stay. I've got one more can of paint left, so I'm gonna go through and try and fill in all the gaps. Um, yeah, look, it's fine. It is what it is. It's not really what I wanted, but it's what it's gonna be for now. So, uh, yes, we have a off ready orange cage. <laughs> awesome. I've got something added to the list of things I never want to do again. This. Spray painting a roll cage. Um, yes, not the colour I wanted. It looks pretty dim in here. I think it's actually going to be a lot brighter outside in the sunlight. Um, most of this is just overspray dust. It's not actually overspray. I got a little bit of overspray here. I'll just go through with a white rattle can and just clean that up. Um, I did get a fair bit of overspray in the foot wells. That's a, a mixture of just dust and and a bit of overspray, so I'll give that a spray and clean up. Um, other than that, I mean, it's not the color I wanted, but it's it's pretty cool. Where's my light? A little light on it, it's actually much brighter. Um, there you go, it gives you a bit of an idea. It's pretty cool. So yeah, not bad. It's just not the fluoro I was after. You can kind of see, like, in the footwell, that's more the fluoro I was after, but shit happens it's gonna stop it rusting it looks pretty cool and I think it's gonna work so uh, yes that is our cage painted so what are we gonna do next well this is the funny thing about YouTube clips you're like oh yeah cool we painted the cage that was uh, two and a half days just to get that done it's it's really freaking time-consuming doing all this shit like masking everything up and then spraying like that took almost 10 rattle cans to spray that um, just tubing, it's the same when painting the trailer, like a big flat surface doesn't take a lot of paint. Tubing takes a heap of paint. So, so in the next, uh, next bit, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go through, vacuum out all the dust. Uh, I'm gonna use thinners and take the paint off anywhere that will come off, like the, the standard white paint in the car. I can, I can use thinners on that because it's, um, it's proper two pack paint and the thinners won't really affect it. Everywhere else, I'll just use a white rattle can and just clean that up. Um, then we need to fit our dashboard in. So we've got our, let me just turn my microphone around so you can hear me. There we go. Um, so we need to squish our, our dashboard in there. We've got our, our lovely flocked dashboard over here hidden under this blanket. So I will need to cut out a section uh, around here, probably into this vent. I'll probably remove this vent and we'll cut that out and that'll fit the front bar here. This guy, so I'll measure all that up. And now I'm hopefully going to get in there and kind of give it a tilt and a wiggle and, and drop it in. Hopefully it'll drop in with those bars. And any extra gap I've got around here, I'll probably print up a little cap or something to fit around it and make it look sexy and all that junk. Um, and then, yeah, and then once that's in, it's it's a matter of just fitting everything else in, which is awesome. I can put all my um, control panels back in. We can fit our gauges, uh, fit the, the monster, the monster taco, the Paul Walker-style monster taco we haven't put in there yet um, 
and pretty much finish off the interior. I've got my um, harness coming in the mail. Should be here either tomorrow, oh, sorry, today or tomorrow from uh, our friends over at Lux Performance. Absolute legends of guys. Honestly, look them up. I'm going to put the their uh, link in the details. Check out their stuff. They've got a lot of cool stuff for the XLs um, and definitely worth supporting them because they support me. You know, they've helped me out with um, with a bunch of stuff. I got my, my racing boots from them um, and yeah, now the harness and, and I supplied them with some brake ducts that they help out the, the fellow XL racers in, in Perth with, which is really cool. So they're a great bunch of guys. They've invited me to come over and have a burn of their cars and come and have a play with them one day. So when money's better, I think I'll jump on a plane and, and go and hang out with them because they're legends. Alrighty, anyway, let's stop jabbering. Let's, uh, we'll come back another day. Same video, another day, and we'll get this interior finished. Alrighty gang, it's been a couple of days and we're back. Um, Z Nugget is looking good, although there's lots of bits we need to try and touch up. So, probably can't see it through this window, but there's a line on the back of the, uh, back of the cage here that's a real bitch to get to. So I'm gonna try and squeeze in there with a the can, get a bit of cardboard on the inside and just touch up those little bits there. Um, same thing through the windscreen, just along here. Gonna try and get those bits and touch up a little few bits of stuff up on the frame. So we'll get that done and then we can clean up all this um, paint dust and clean off all the bits on the white and all the fun stuff. So let's get cracking. Alrighty, I'm not filming too much of this because I'm pretty much just painting and you've seen paint and it's really boring. So I, um, yeah, I'm just finishing up the bars. We're gonna go through and just fix up all the overspray, all the white bits, and any bits that look crappy, and then we'll start uh, hacking up this dashboard. In the meantime, it's time for a cup of tea. Fast forward and we're kind of done. I've been uh, digging through the garage trying to find any cans of white paint with, <laughs> with paint left in them so I can finish up this. But I've got, you know, the towers kind of painted up and looking better and there's still a bit of uh, pink dust around which I've still got to clean up but uh, I've kind of had enough of doing that for now. So yes, everything is looking a lot better. Still a lot of dust under the gear shift and all that jazz but everything else is um, Pretty much done, so I'm gonna let this dry for a bit and then we're gonna start hacking this dashboard up. Now for the scary part. Okay gang, here's where we're at. So we've got our uh, lovely dashboard that's all flocked and stuff and now we're about to hack it up. So if we have a look in the car, this is the problem I am facing. Our dashboard, as standard, comes out to, it sort of sits here and just sits on the outside of this pillar. And so basically the outside panel's here. So we've got a roll cage in the way, both sides. So the mounting points I've got, we've got one in here and we've got one up here. Uh, and on the other side, there's the one that I've painted there that you can see. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna cut a space for the bar to fit through, but I'm gonna cut a slot so I can try and hopefully stretch that outside panel, just flex it out a bit, get the dashboard drop down and then just sort of have it pop back in. And now I can like drill some holes and cable tie it onto there. So we've still got the outside panel of the dashboard. It doesn't look like crap. Um, there's a fair chance as I flex it out and I'm trying to wiggle it in, I'm probably gonna break it, but we can only but try. So I've now marked up the dashboard and I've got some uh, funky cutting tools here. So what I wanna do is basically cut out a section uh, here and that's where the bottom section of the cage fits through. Top section is not too bad. It's just this, this section here. Unfortunately, it does cut into our little uh, vent there, but that's not the end of the world. Um, same here. It'll just come into the little vent there. And this bottom section here, what I'm gonna try and do is I wanna keep this bottom mount so it doesn't flop around. So I'm gonna cut a slot here, section out here where the cage fits through, and hopefully I can just open that up enough to get around the cage, snap it back together, bolt that down and I can do a couple of cable style stitches to keep the dashboard in there. It's ambitious, let's see what happens.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my freaking nightmare. So, we got the dashboard in with uh, an immense amount of scratching on the cage, which was always going to happen. Uh, it is so tight when you're trying to get it in with a cage. It's just not meant to do it. So, I ended up hacking a heap more out of here. I had to hack the bonnet release out. That's cool. I'll reposition that somewhere. Um, managed to keep the, open that up, managed to keep the outside panel though, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, same with the other side, although most of the flocking disappeared <laughs> as it got scraped through. Um, yes, now I have to figure out how this was all routed. I'm pretty sure I've got that. Um, but yeah, apart from the outside, the dashboard managed to survive. We lost our little uh, nameplate here, a little blanking plate. So I'll uh, glue that back in, give that another crack. Um, yeah, look, it was always going to scratch the shit out of the cage. But we did the best we could with the tools we had. So now I'm going to re-thread all this uh, cabling through and then I can uh, box it in. Okay. Oh god. Alright, the wires are somewhat where they're supposed to be now. I've got the gauge cluster wires, all the other shits over here. Now I need to throw some bolts in this dashboard to stop it uh, trying to escape so that's somewhat where it needs to be <sighs> yes I just dropped a bolt down the back of the dashboard I'm starting to invent swear words now. All right, you know those days where I, those videos where I don't film much because I'm busy? This is, this is kind of one of them. So I got the dashboard back in. That side was an absolute pain in the ass. Holes didn't line up, cage is just pulling it everywhere. Anyway, managed to get it in. Um, I've got all the bolts in for the dashboard and it is in there really good and tight, thank God. So now we are putting our gauge cluster back in. I've got all the cables run. Uh, I've got a speedo mount in there, which should be fine. I was apparently supposed to put that in before I locked the dash down, but I didn't, so I had to get creative with that one. And in theory, I should just be able to plug all this crap back in, and our dashboard will work. Um, if it doesn't, I don't care. Got some Elton John going in the background. He's coming to Australia, down the green apparently. Good for you, Elton. Alrighty. Okay. Let's in. I think. By the way, the uh, Elton John song playing in the radio at the moment is uh, Tiny Dancer, which uh, I always thought was Hold Me Closer, Tiny Dancer. No? You know what's satisfying? Actually putting my gauges in. Hopefully for the last time. Remember how long ago we did all this? So, there is our water gauge. And our oil pressure gauge. These have been sitting in my office. I've been using them as a test platform to make sure all my gauge pods that I've been making for everyone fit. Oh, let those new gauge endorphins run through you. How good is that? Much excited. Now, the thing we do have, a Paul Walker Monster Taco. Taco, do we get through this? Taco, taco. Let's get this box out of here. Box 
actually gone. So, sorry, it's really backlit with the garage door open. Oh god, does that even work? No. It's more hard than that, there we go. So, I'm not going to put this in right away, but we can have a look about where it's going to fit. I reckon. And here looks pretty good. Obviously, yes, I am aware it is upside down. Oh, pretty close in indicators, but not close enough to make an issue. I reckon that's going to be pretty cool. Okay, things are going fairly smoothly. We've got uh, most of the center switch panel in here now. Um, just tightening up the kill switch. I'm going to run my switches for my gauges and my thermo fan. But it's, uh, <laughs> it's really tight back here. I kind of forgot. So I'm just uh, fighting with wiring looms at the moment. It's not too bad. I haven't been, uh, I haven't been filming everything because honestly it's boring. It is me hooking up cables, heater cables, all the stuff that nobody gives a shit about. But our switch panel is in and it seems like all the switches work, which is fantastic. Oh god, I'm just, uh, I'm just hooking up our emergency battery stopper cable thingy with Bob. I don't remember what size screws I used. Because I'm an idiot, I forgot to put the screws aside for this. So they're just in the box, not even labelled or anything like that. There's not an empty. But that's okay. Okay, Paul Walker Monster Taco is going in. So I've spun it round. Got a shift light there. That is the perfect spot. So it's got a slot in here for a. Uh, a clamp, so I'm just trying to figure out the nicest spot to put that. I think I'll hide the clamp up here. I can still access it, but it's not in the way. Plug in our cable. Oh my god. Go in the hole. The hole is your home. It's good for your home. Ignition. Awesome. Gauges. Gauge lights. Nice. I'm going to change the color of the other gauges. Yes, it is white. Excellent. Alrighty, and there we have it, guys. I am done for today. So uh, my battery died while I was filming that, but yet the uh, the cable's all tied down. We've got a bit of loose cable up the front there, which I don't think I need, so I'm going to chop all that back. Um, our dashboard is in. Our gauges are in. Uh, I need to fix up where we. Scratched up the the, uh, the roll cage, putting it in, which was to be expected. The other side is much worse. Um, I need to put in my little blanket plate, and uh, yeah, continue on. I think this this lead here can pretty much go because that is just um, door open sensor, um, seat belt sensor, speaker cables. I don't even know what the hell that's for, but the car works without it. So once I confirm that's what it is, I'm going to get rid of that. Um, a few other little cables down here to just tuck away and secure, but apart from that, dashboard is done. I am pretty stoked. So I was pretty over that today. Alrighty gang, thanks for watching. Um, sorry that was a bit of a haphazard episode, like nothing really flowed well and I really just wanted to get it done and I sort of was running out of time and the paint wasn't working, but I think the cage looks pretty cool. The dashboard looks sick in there. It's um. 
yeah it's cool we're almost there almost there so next episode i have my racing harness i'm just waiting for a couple of um plates for the underneath of that so we'll do an installing the harness episode which would be cool uh also fire extinguisher and little bits and bobs like that so we'll see you in the next episode for that thanks for watching